Hey, hey, what's up? This is Actors Daily Bread. This is where I teach you how to crush your auditions, book more work, and live a life that you love. Today, we are talking about how to get an agent. And I have a very special guest joining me today, and that is Brian Pataka. I am going to bring him to the screen right now. Brian! Hi! I'm so happy to be here. Thank you. Actors Daily Bread! Thank you so much. I'm so glad to be here to talk to you. I'm so happy that you're here. I'm so happy that you're here. Y'all go ahead and let me put my, let me come to the comment area. Just FYI, I know we're streaming this in a few places. So the way this works, I'm on an app called StreamYard. So I may not see your name, but you can still feel free to comment. I should see the comments here, but we're going to dive right into the conversation. If you're new to us, go ahead and put a one in the chat. If you've never watched an Actors Daily Bread, put a one in the chat so I can welcome you. If you're an OG, we go together. You know what it is. Go ahead and put OG in the comments. <laughs> right? So all my replay watchers who will watch this later, what's up, replay watchers? Love you guys. Listen, I'm post COVID. I'm post conference. This is the first time I've been live, and I'm here with Brian. Mm. Brian and I, um, we met some years ago through yeah. Dallas Travers, and then we just kind of clicked one day across the room. I was like, "You my friend. I like yeah. you. We're friends." Mm, I love that. Yeah, <laughs> we went to lunch together. It was a nice day. <laughs> Yes. Yes. Uh, so thank you. I see you all popping in the room. So listen, we're going to get right into it because your time is valued, valuable to me. Um, so, but this is the season, Brian. And the re reason why I connected with Brian, we've been doing stuff, you know, we help each other out and we share each other's amazing resources all the time. But we connected because Brian he calls himself, what do you call it, the rest, representation whisperer? Is that yeah, what someone, someone else called me that, which is why I stole it. I was like, oh, I'll take that name. Yes. One of my clients <laughs> called me the representation whisperer because she got all these meetings. She goes, what happened? How'd this happen? She was very like, what is going on? Yeah. <laughs> That you called me the but you you have been. I mean, and those of you, shout out to those of you who are in Hollywood bound actors, book more TV with me, rise. I've had I do have many clients, Brian, who have worked with you, have taken your agent goals course, all the things. And so it's not just like fluff. And the whole this whole agent thing can be really tricky, it can be really intimidating, yeah. it can be really scary, it brings up our worthiness issues, it brings up all kinds of deep stuff on the surface. As you know, because you do this for real, for real, yeah. you think it's people that I just need an agent. Yeah. And then you start giving them some action steps and asking them some questions, asking them to go deep, and a lot of stuff comes up. So we're, yeah. we have a few things we make sure, make sure we want to touch on, but you can feel free to leave your comments because I will leave some time at the end if there's a very specific question you have. But Brian, if it's okay with you, I'm ready to just dive in. Yeah, let's right. go for it. I love it. Let's and by the it. way, anybody who's thinking about leaving a question or comment, I just want to make space for what you just said, Christine, which is even questions around agents can feel scary to ask. So yeah. I just want everyone who is sitting there like thinking, I don't know if I can ask this question to just listen to the invitation you got from Christine. And I encourage you to like, there's no question that is too unsafe or unfair or, or too simple to ask about agents. Cause I think that it can be a place where we even feel intimidated to like, I should know this already or some crap Ooh. like that. And I want to break through that limiting belief. That's so good. And before we dive in, let me, let me also say this for those of y'all who know me and trust me, I trust my intuition and I'm very careful and very protective of my audience and who I bring in and who I allow to share. So I just want to say that to you also, mm -hmm. because I know there's so much information out here and it can feel like, well, this person said this. And I just know mm -hmm. that this is a situation. And I have, I have seen, look, I have downloaded the things. I've watched Brian's classes. I have students who work with Brian. So I, I'm just saying he's vetted to me. You do your own due diligence, but he's vetted to me. So, and be sure to follow him at Brian Says That. He has a great Instagram and all the socials. And if you're not following us at Hollywood Bond Actors, I mean, what you doing? I mean, come on. <laughs> um, so let's dive in. When we talk about getting rep, and this is whether you are brand spanking new hmm? or you're seasoned and you're ready to up level. What have you found, Brian, as you've dealt with so many of us, to be the biggest area of struggle to even begin the process of looking for new representation? Um, it's the way you ask that question is so perfect because it's kind of in the question in some way. And there is this myth of readiness that no matter what level you're at in your career, you 
actors can grab onto. And it is a painful myth because I believe that it makes an actor say, well, when I have that credit, when I have that scene on my reel, when I have those headshots, when I have uh, that acting teacher, when I have this under my belt, I will then be ready for representation. And I just want everyone who's listening to hear that that is a big fat lie. And the reason why I believe that and the way I see it over and over and over again um, is there is an agent and there is a manager who want you exactly as you are right now. Mm -hmm. Our job is to make that clear to them. So the reason why I say that is that this is the big struggle is because I got to get perfect before I reach out. Mm -hmm. And then what you're selling to that manager agent isn't actually exactly what you offer because you really only have that couple of credits or only have the reel that only looks this good or like I'm trying to sound a little puffed up or better than I am right now. And then what happens is you started this relationship on a space of like not exact honesty. I'm not saying anyone ever lies in their messaging that they put out. Let me say this a different way. Another way to say this might be if you sound so perfect in your career, hey, agent, I got this going on. I got this audition. I got this booking. Da, 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 da. I'm studying with this person. Bah, 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 bah. And I'm the agent who reads that email. Let's pretend it's an email right now. Then what I say is, wow, they have it all going on. Going on. Why would they need me? Mm. I probably can't do anything more for them. And I think we have a vulnerability around saying, hey, I actually need, we need to express a vulnerability saying, I actually need help. I can't get where I want to go without you. And we tend to believe that that's implied and we have to make it explicit and not implicit. Mm. So the implicit ask of, I'm reaching out to you, so obviously I need an agent, but I'm going to make myself sound perfect, doesn't actually jive and it makes you sound delusional. Because mm. it makes me sound, I'm so perfect. I got everything going on. Don't you want to get on the moving train with me? Because look where my career is headed. Don't miss it, honey. Don't yes. miss it. <laughs> yes. And this happens from actors at the beginning in their career to the end, they're saying the same thing. And that is like, oh, well, actually, as I looked at what you said is going on, like, I don't know if I can do any better than what you have going on. I guess I don't need to do this. And we we tend to say, well, of course I can do better. Like they're not seeing the whole unless you show them the hole that they're meant to fill. Mm, that's good. Belinda Stanton says, that's good info, Brian. Yes, yes. Belinda. Is yes, and in if we think of it this way, also like this is my image. I always like to think of if they're the person you're reaching out to, a manager agent. I want you to picture them as they're standing at Starbucks, they got two crying kids holding onto their hand, screaming, and they're trying to order a coffee at the same time they're holding their phone while they read your email. That's how I want you to imagine their the, the reader is right. They're, they're so busy. There's a million things going on. They're super distracted, and they're trying to read your email because you're trying to reach out to them to represent you. If you don't. If you're not explicit, if you don't tell them to like read, but don't allow them to read between the lines because you make everything so explicit for them, you're going to allow them to make assumptions about you. They're going to allow them to choose not to meet with you. Mm. And I want to just say that another, and I think it can be hard because it can, you can end up sounding delusional when you do this. But the problem is you need to say, here's my resume. But if I just reduce you to your resume, if I reduce you to your credits, and if you reduce yourself to your credits, if you don't let me understand between the lines, like I was called in by this casting director and had a callback and I met that, like, that's the story we need to hear behind each of some of your credits, not each of your credits, because there might be too many on your resume, but we yeah. need to extrapolate from your resume how that booking came to be. And then the part where I find a lot of magic, and this is the part where actors write themselves off way too often, is the auditions where you didn't get it or the auditions where you got a callback those are sometimes where some of the biggest, best juices, because you have to imagine that agent or manager probably sent their clients out for that audition or tried to get their client that audition. Mm -hmm. And you say, well, wow, just getting that audition for myself was a big deal, or just getting that callback was a big deal. And they need to, like, remember their job is to sit at a desk and go, you got a callback. Oh, you didn't book it. We're on to the next one. Like that's right. the juice of the story they want to be in. So if you are reducing yourself to your credits, then you're going to attract a manager agent who wants you only for your credits. And then now you have to dread every time you don't book the job. And now you've got a year long relationship with an agent where you're like, oh my God, I didn't book the next job. I didn't book the job. They're going to drop me. They're going to drop me. And then your whole relationship hinges upon those receipts. Ooh. And I don't know. And look, you know what? There may be someone who's listening right now who wants that kind of relationship with their manager agent. I am a reverend and a life coach. So I am about compassion. I am about the relationship. I am about the, the life that I want to live be yeah. with my success and with the people in my life. And so I will just say that the methodology that I use does tend to attract a more compassionate 
manager and agent because we're getting away from reduce me to my receipts and see me as the whole artist. Oh, come on. Reduce me to my receipts. <laughs> I got to pause on that. Debbie Ray says, I love that there's an agent looking for me right where I am. Debbie, I, I want to just underline, highlight, take a billboard out in Times Square and say that over and over again, because the truth is what we tend to go is what well, they want me to be like this. They, 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 we make all these stories up about who they are mm -hmm. and the place to look isn't at them. It is at a mirror. Who am I right now? Mm -hmm. How can I be more fiercely honest about where I am in the business? Because then when I cast a broad net and I reach out to managers and agents, the ones who are not meant for me, the ones that need more credits, the ones yeah. that have to have that perfect reel, the ones that expect a referral, the things that I might not have right now, they need to self-eliminate. So the person who loves me as I am with the resume I have, with the reel I kind of have, with the pieces that I have together already will say, oh, I'd like to meet with you. Mm -hmm. Because that's going to be the relationship that sees you for where you're at and knows what their job is for you. I love that because, you know, what's coming up for me also is you talked a lot about this is where I am and this is where I desire to be. But sometimes there's that gap for us as as artists, even owning and admitting where we desire to be. And so we can that can bring up. Worthiness issues that can bring yeah, up. Sure. Am I pretending to be something that I'm not? But shouldn't I show them who what I'm stepping into? So how do you? Because that can just keep us in paralysis analysis and just have oh, us not anything. Totally, yeah. And I love that you brought this up. That's a perfect question. It says it is important that you say that when you're reaching out that we're casting a light on where you want to go. Because otherwise you may end up with the wrong age. It's like, I want to get you only out for commercials or like, you're going to do drama. And you're like, I do comedy. What's that? Like, we do need to make sure we're casting a light towards where we want to go. And this answer is the best answer of all. So I love this question. Show that in your acting. So when you reach out to managers and agents, there has to be a place where they get to see your acting, right? Uh oh, did I lose you, Christine? I lost you for a second, I think. I'm still here. I just give you the full screen, honey. Oh, you lo oh, I love it. Okay. So there has to be a place where the, they get to see you doing your thing. And what I say is when you're going to, I often will suggest that you send a self-tape to a manager and agent. So if you're sending a self-tape to a manager agent, why would you not be showing a self-tape that shows you doing the work you want to book? So if you want to book co-stars, you'll send them a co-star tape. Please do not send them a co-stars tape. They don't want to book you co-stars anyway. They want you to book guest stars and series regulars and recurring. So show them the juice of what you can do. And if comedy is what you want to be doing, then that scene should be some piece where you're making them laugh. Right. So instead of having to tell them, you know, we say show, don't tell. This is an example of show, don't tell by your desire is captured in the material you're showing them that you're doing. Now, the reason why this gets tricky is a lot of people say, well, I'm just going to send them my reel, which when you're Christine Horn and you're working pretty consistently and you got reel that shows your recent work, that can work. Most actors don't always have that piece in place when they're at this place in their career, or a lot of us might not have it in the moment. Right. We just gone through a pandemic. Right. So then you would have to have something a little bit current. So that would be a beautifully put together self tape, right? And that works and it works time and time again. So I really want to add to the K if that's one thing you walk away from this call today is you do not have to have a perfect reel to reach out to managers and agents, but it you does. do have to remember that they are, if it's a good manager agent, they're going to look at your acting, which is why thank goodness you're in the hands of someone like Christine who can make sure your acting is popping. Yeah. You understand your type and all that. Right. You, man, I've been, <laughs> I'm laughing because we're, for those of you who have been following me, y'all know we just had Booking Magnet Live in Atlanta a few weeks ago. Um, and so I have so many amazing new souls who I'm working with one on one. And I've been talking, I've been doing a lot of sessions, Brian. A lot of, a lot of, good. a lot of coaching. Right. Zoom is zooming. <laughs> And that's one of the things I'm talking about. Like, and for some of them, it's like, I want to do this, but I don't have that yet. And I'm like, show me, prove yes. it to me. Oh, can I talk? Yes. <laughs> listen to me, y'all. If I get one thing to underline, I'm sounding like I'm from Atlanta now because we've been yeah. talking. So listen, so if you have one thing to take away from, this has become, it always was this way, but it's now even more true. This is an evidence-based business. Mm. Do not show me your credits. Show me you can do it. So Somebody show me the tape. 
Somebody put that in the chat. Mary, I see you, Mary Ritano. Put it in the chat. Oh, Mary, I love Mary. Yes, yes. yes. It is an evidence-based business. We need to see what you say you can do. Your resume is not enough. And it used to be, let me get the resume. If the resume gets out there, it's going to get me auditions or my profile is going to get me auditions. Yes, those are part of it. I want to take that away. But I got to see the work. I got to see the work. Your tape can mean more than your credits. That should make you feel freaking great. Because the thing you were called to do is be an actor and you love to act much better than organize words on a page. So like work on the acting. That's such good news, I think. And so yeah. the way that I like to draw in the manager or agent is by making them fall in love with your acting, mm. which is what you're already called to do. Which, so, Which is we what we're called to do, which is what y'all yeah. want to do. Yes. Right? I love yeah. that. I love that. Hello. I see y'all watching. Look, I'm here with Brian Pataka. Okay. Follow him and Brian says that. Yes, I see y'all loving this evidence-based business. Hey, Jalen Hope. Yes, you never thought of it that way. Well, hey, this is why we're here. Change mm. that paradigm. Because you know what also happens, Brian? We're, we have this idea of, oh, there's so many gatekeepers and they don't want to talk to me and I'm afraid of doing it wrong. I think it was Verlinda earlier who talked about her biggest, I'm going to go back to an earlier comment you did, Verlinda. I'm a SAG actor, actors, no rep. My fear is the cover letter, not wanting to give too much, but you know, we want to get the cover letter just right. Like it's yes. our thesis in college, honey. You yes. know? But I think what you're reminding me of right now also is just, we are talking to other humans. Yeah. It's and hard. you know what, like, and, and I'll just say, I want to say this one more time is like, it's, I understand that it can sound radical or revolutionary to put that in the conversation because it does feel like you have to earn your right to be with a manager agent, even though they work for you, which is this weird dysfunction that is in the relationship that you have to get over, right? But if you're going to have a great relationship with a manager agent, it's going to be based on them believing in your talent. Mm. And so where actors can hit a wall is their own belief. Right. right. That's why a lot of the work, like you said earlier, is about some deep work on owning who have I been so far in the business and where have I where have I met the universe's call for me? Right. Where I signed up for Christine's class. I moved to Los Angeles. I moved to Atlanta. I, I, I decided to take that voiceover class. I did these things where I said yes to my calling that have lined me up to be that much more ready to be with representation right now. And if we all believe in a constantly positively conspiring universe God that is wanting the best for us, then we also have to believe, and this is sometimes painful, that we haven't had the right representation or we haven't had representation or we're in a crux around representation because we weren't quite ready for it. Ooh, ooh, it ooh, ho, ho, hold on. <laughs> if you can't say amen, you will say ouch. Pick one. <laughs> That's great. I love that, Christina. Oh my I God, I'm that. That was her. That's not even mine. One of my, <laughs> one of my business mentors. If you can't say amen, you just might say ouch. Just pick one. It's okay. Yeah. We're getting some fires up in here. We're getting some hand claps. It. Hallelujahs. Yes. Listen, but you touched on something about maybe not having the right rep. Yeah. So I know there's some of y'all watching in our communities who have rep right now. And listen, Brian, I love... I love relating things to food and relationships. I just okay. I like and I like relationships, right? And okay. I'm like sometimes like some of y'all are in these relationships, just to say you got one, these situationships. You be like, they don't like if you was in a relationship with a dude, you'd be like, tell me about him. Well, he don't call me, he's not really friendly, he's kind of mean, he don't. I would be like, and you're still in that relationship. For me, agent manager relationships can be the for me, I I could they're the same to me. This is a partnership. Mm. And sometimes these are abusive relationships. Sometimes we're afraid. We have all these fears. So I want us quickly to speak to, for you to speak to, the actor right now who's sitting in Mary says, LOL, the situation ship. Y'all know what I'm talking <laughs> about. Don't act. <laughs> But can we talk about there's an actor watching us right now who's in a relationship, in a partnership with the, with a team, and they don't feel seen, they don't feel heard, or they're just wondering, is it time for me to leave? How do I yeah. know when it's time for me to make this leap? What yeah. are your thoughts on that? First of all, do not don't discredit your intuition around this. It doesn't mean you're right that you should leave, but it does mean that something wants to be looked at. You know, it's just like saying, hey, let's pick up the magnifying glass and just look around a little bit. It doesn't mean the magnifying glass needs to be put at your agent. It might mean the magnifying glass needs to be looking at you. Here's why. We all have had parents in some form or another, and we bring that baggage to our manager's and agent. 
Because guess what? Someone, some point in your life, I don't care if you grew up in a Montessori school, you, someone said being an actor can be hard or you might not make money or it's going to be, you know, are you sure you should do that? At some point, that little tinkle got said to you and you worried a little bit. And we can seek from representation approval to be choosing this life. Mm -hmm. And it is hella not fair to do that. So we have to remember that baggage can show up when we're like not getting what we want from our agent manager. Because I do believe it is time to sometimes go back and say, hey, it's not working. But also just like, let's check ourselves first. Like, hey, is any of this my stuff before I go there? Because I am always an advocate for renewing your vows before your divorce. I believe in love. So I want to try to renew your vows first. So first case, first case scenario is my side of the street clean. Have they asked me for something new and I got it to them right away? What kind of client have I been? So just giving yourself a light report card around that can be helpful without judgment. I think about, think of like your scientist hat on. So you're not judging yourself or degrading or degrading yourself when you're like, I have not, mm, I showed up. I didn't kind of look at that. And then the second piece is if you say to me, you haven't had an audition in six months, do you have a manager agent at all? Mm -hmm. Right. And it's not, here's the part where it gets tricky. We got to look at yourself is, it's not just their job to be in your relationship. You know, we were talking before we came on today, we were saying like, oh, I got my guest star. And, you know, used to believe like, if I got your guest star, it's all set. Now I'm all set, right? So if we've moved into the place, I got my manager agent, now I'm all set. I think most of the actors who are listening to something like this know that that's not how it works, but just to kind of make sure you check yourself there. Um, and then the other thing is, if the person doesn't speak German, you can't ask them to speak German. If they are not capable of offering the kind of communication that you need, then quit banging your head up against the door and say, oh, they just can't do that. Yeah. So like they, it's not you as the only actor they never respond to. Maybe all their actors aren't hearing back from them right away. Mm -hmm. So you have to go, okay, great. Now I get to decide, am I okay with that? Because you don't have to be. You're allowed to say, you know what? They're doing a great job at their desk doing what they love to do and there's nothing wrong with them and it doesn't match with me. It doesn't work for me. Yeah. It's allowed to be that you are make. this is where you own the decision instead of making them wrong. And that is where some of the magic has to come from. So that's what I think, again, it's, again, it's looking at yourself. Who is it that I need to be to have the kind of relationship that I want? And that's, mm. that's, the hard, that's that challenging word. Mm. Go ahead and put juicy in the chat. Go ahead and put juicy in the chat. If this is juicy to you. Yes. <laughs> I'm serious. Before I move on, put juicy in the chat. Before we move on, because I want to share something with you. Brian, when I do this, do I go away? Can you still see me? I still see you. Okay, great. I just want to right. pull up something really quick because I want to put okay. it in the comments um, because y'all are going to want this. Thank you, Mary, um, for writing Juicy and Ronnie. Yes. Yes. Come on, Juicy. I see you, Ronnie Huston, Juicy. Somebody put Helen. Helen. <laughs> <laughs> I can't see your Love name. It. Love but it. But listen. I want y'all to know this. If this is, if y'all are picking up what Brian is putting down, there's a link I'm putting in. Yeah, I just I'm putting it in the comments and I'll put it in there a few more times. It's already in the description of this live before I put it in here. But <laughs> somebody put K U. You got a typo. Goosey. It's goosey. It's goosey. <laughs> it's goosey. <laughs> Listen though, if this, if you're enjoying this, and this is just. This is just the tip of the iceberg. Brian and I, we, we will talk for hours, honey. We will <laughs> I've been on his podcast. If you you also totally be following his podcast, Brian Breaks Character. He has Thank such you. amazing guests on that show. Um, and I'm honored that you've invited me and so many amazing people to be there. But yeah. Brian, I have teamed up with Brian to do an exclusive webinar, class, workshop, whatever you want to call it. It's on a computer. Three dates. We have three dates that he's exclusively coming to teach my community. Three dates, and I want to make sure I get them right. It's Thursday, August 11th, mm -hmm. Saturday, August 13th, and Tuesday, August 16th. So the link I'm posting in here, it is a free class. You can just show up. I'm putting the link in here. Sign up because he's. we, we don't have a ton of time today. Of course, we can go on and on about this. And I have a couple more things I do want to ask you before we wrap okay. today. Right. Just wanted to make sure that y'all got that. Um, and when this video ends, I'll... I'll edit the description so it's toward the top so you don't have to search for it. But don't delay, sign up because, you know, we want to make sure you get all the good good. Because I know I've met so many of you, especially from the conference, Brian, actors from Chicago, from, from Illinois, from, from Atlanta, from Boston, from New York, from L.A., from South Carolina. And it can be really 
intimidating just to step into a new part of this process. Um, and I want to talk about one part as y'all are signing up for this. Thank you. I see you signed up. Yes, Yay. Ronnie. But I'm Yay. already signed up. Yes. You know what a part that's, you know, there's, there's a saying in sales, right? The fortune is in the follow-up. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> But let me tell you, that follow-up scares the crap out oh, of sure. people. Oh, um, can I get in? Yes. <laughs> okay. So I, you have all heard this, that the follow-up is so important. But I know when you click send on an email to a manager agent, within that send carries with it a wish for something that is so vital and important to you because that send isn't just an ask for somebody else. That send is a, and this is going to open the door to the kind of roles that I want to play where I'm going to feel more aligned with who I want to be, that I'm going to show up in the way that I want to show up. And what does it mean for me to make money as an actor? So much is contained in that single send. And when we hear silence or not right now from somebody else, it can, it can bruise us. Right. Yeah. So inside of the, when we talk inside of the class, right, I get a little bit into how to respond to all the five different ways people respond. And this can help if you want to take a note of this. There's only five ways people respond. Yes. No. Tell me more silence and not right now. Right. And I think it's important to hear, have a response crafted for yourself for even the silence. What is, what is your internal response going to be to that? Now, that being said, you know what date you can't send your email out to managers and agents? The 5th of February. It's the only <laughs> date. Okay, so let me just be clear. I have had clients sign with agents every single week of the entire 52 weeks of the year. Yes, the week between Christmas and New Year's. Uh-huh, sure did. One of my busiest weeks, in fact, for some of my clients. So stop it. Because hiding behind the time of year is a form of hiding. So let me talk to you about follow-up. How dare you think that your one email is enough? How dare you? How do you respond to the emails in your inbox? How many emails did you delete today? Wow. wow. That was not, that was How not. dare you take away the dignity of a person who might be destined to meet you? How dare you decide that your hands are more important than God's? that your hands are more important than the universe is in that moment and say, they do not get to hear from me again because they didn't respond on my first one because if they were interested, they would have responded. Woo! Amen or out. Which and I will tell you, and I will tell you, it's cyclical. I will just notice because I'm working with so many actors reaching out to reps. I'm like, you know what? It seems like right now we're in a pattern where everyone's responding to the third email. Isn't that weird? Everyone's responding to the first email lately. Isn't that weird? So we just have a, 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 like, that's just the weather. What's in the weather right now is people respond to the first one. What's in the weather right now? People are responding through. It has nothing to do with your precious, wild, and beautiful soul, whether or not someone responds to you. I will just say, A Course in Miracles, which is the non-denominational spirituality that I, I was trained in, will say, we have no, to try to understand the motivations of others is dangerous to our soul. And so when you get into why they didn't respond, why they did, why they used that word, blah, 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 you are treading in hell. And I'm not going to go there with you. You're going to send three emails because you're going to give this person a chance to notice you. And so, of course, like I'll give you exact timing and subject lines and all that to take care of this so that you can stay taking care of yourself in this process. Because I know this whole thing, it's going to bring your stuff up when you're yeah. doing this, right? So we have to build self-care into this. Yeah. It gets loud. Yeah. It gets yeah. loud. Yeah. Yes. Jonez, I love your mindset. The loving is. There's a whole lot of amens. Y'all, isn't this refreshing just to hear a different take instead of it just being so fear-based? Look, I've been there too. I have been there where it's like, it's just, it's just so much fear. It's our heart on the line. We put mm. our heart on the line to do this, to do auditions, to even say I'm an actor. And then I have to put my heart on the line just to hope you want me. Yeah. Yeah. That's and hard. I think it, what I think is so, the word that I always come to right here when, when we say, have these kind of conversations is dignity. Give the person who's at their receiving end the dignity of saying no and it having nothing to freaking do with you. Mm -hmm. Give them the dignity of saying, I, I can't get on board with where you want to go because I don't know if I can get you there. Mm -hmm. Or at my office, I'm not allowed to work with actors who are developmental right now, so I'd love to say yes to you, but I can't. Instead of making the story that they didn't respond because they don't like me or I don't have enough credits on my resume or my resume isn't good enough. Can we give them the dignity of a positive and generous assumption? is another way to say that.
Ooh, that's good. I know y'all, I know it's, I know it's juicy, y'all. I know it's juicy. <laughs> But we, we can't we can't stay forever. This is why I want y'all to sign up for one of these webinars that Brian's gonna do. Listen, these wait, are and, wait, what, what, if I can just say, Christine, at the at the webinar, y'all, I leave plenty of time to answer lots of questions. So if something sparks yeah. today and you're like, yeah, but Brian, I think that's BS. Like I want you to bring your skepticism because yeah. the track record for what this is is a little unbelievable, and I get that. So I encourage your skepticism because that is one of the ways that we work through resistance and we learn. And if I can get you to think about this a little bit differently, I will have done my job, and hopefully you'll go out into the world and feel a little more powerful when it comes to the next time you reach out to reps. That's my wish. And what I love about even what you just said just now, and even when I'm working with, with actors – we don't realize how much we are getting in our own way. And it's much easier to be like, that don't work. Mm, I don't, that, I don't know what people talking about. It's just easy to do that than to accept and embrace that there's help on the other side of those thoughts. You know, so I just want you to, we, we are open-minded here. We are open hearts and open minds here. Uh, I can't see your name, but I'm going to read this comment. I needed this today. Amen. I'm sending out lots of opportunities for myself with these auditions. Good job. Yes. I can't see your name, but I feel you. I feel your heart there. Um, last, before we wrap, um, especially since Ms. Rona came to town, mm. And we, everything has moved to online. Everything is social media. We, people aren't in their offices. We have, we've now made up a whole new slew of reasons and stories behind why we, we're not repped or why things yeah. aren't the way they are because we feel like there's even more gatekeepers. At least when people were in the office every day, we felt like, okay, if I can just get past the receptionist or the assistant. But now we're like, it's social media. How can I even connect and, and, and get my materials there? Do you have any nugget you can share just for some encouragement around that or anything that you're that you teach that yeah. on that? I think so. I, I think so. I think I understand your question, but I'll just say this. It, and that is inside of the program, I give you a database that is updated every single week. So that part I want to let go of the gatekeeping. But I want you to hear this because I think it's bigger than coronavirus. I think it's bigger than all it is. If you're not meant to get to them. Thank goodness we get one more person we get to cross off the list that we're holding the space for. Mm. So I I believe that every door you can't get through is on purpose a door that you're not meant to get through. So in my experience, I actually ask people usually to reach out to cast a wider net. And so they might reach out to 300 or 800 or in LA, they may reach out to 1200 reps if they want to go that big, right? And the ones that don't get through, they bounce back or whatever. I believe like, great, we are moving on. You got 1,200 people on the list. Are we going to worry about five? Are we going to worry about 10? Mm -hmm. Or, and this is sometimes when people are like, well, I can't find the email address of this person on my target list. I don't, I'm going to tell you, tell everyone right now, I do not believe in target lists. We're going to unhash that in the webinar together. But I think when it comes to the way that coronavirus has affected the business, the thing I want to take back to is it just means we are looking for more evidence. Mm. Show me you can do what you say you can do because all my clients have sent me a tape this week for an audition and I know everything they can do. So how dare you think you can't send me a tape? I've not even met you yet. I don't know you. You're a stranger. Come on, show me your work. Why are you holding out on me? Right? So I think again, what's no matter what happens is we're still people who are excited about actors are the ones you want to work with. People are excited about acting and love to watch you share the story. So that doesn't go away no matter what mode we have to get it to them. Right. And I will just, just because you mentioned it, I will just say you do social media, wonderful, great, not needed to get a manager and agent, not needed at all. We're good. I got you. No one have I ever focused on their social media about this. It's good for your business. Great. I am not going to talk about it. It is not needed in the 542 people who have found representation with me. It is nothing to do with their social media. So take that off the table. Take it off the shoulder. That's yeah. one. Yeah. Take it off thing. Brian, I'm so grateful that you were here today. If you thank you conversation again follow brian pataka at brian says that again you have three opportunities brian is doing this just for my audience just for you people that's all you get right. you get, can't wait to see you <laughs> and i just i'm looking at my folder so i don't make up the dates wrong thursday august 11th saturday august 13th bless you tuesday you. august 16th just click the link that I've been posting in the chat and find a day and time that works for you. Listen, also, there's no replays. So don't be like, I'll just sign up and then I'm going to forget. And then 
there's no replays. We're not sending recordings afterward. You want to be there live. Is live live, as one of my friends would say. <laughs> It's not a recording. You'll be able to ask questions. You're going to get your life, bring your notepad and bring an open heart. And I always like to say, look, if what you've been doing is not working for you, be open to trying something different. Be open to a different perspective. You know, Les Brown will always say, mm -hmm. you know, if you, if you fight for your limitations, you always get to keep them. So if you want to fight by, well, someone said this and someone said that. And the other teacher I talked to said, that, well, okay, I'm not going to fight you on that. No. Okay. People, people are going to say what they say. Y'all know we've been following for a while. Opinions are like buttholes. Everybody has one. <laughs> Eat the fish, spit out the bones. But yeah. be open. Look at your situation. And I dare you to look at you mm -hmm. and ask yourself, what are some of the things that have been causing a block? And Brian, I'll say this before we go. Maybe you can touch on this as we wrap. I encourage my clients to really sit and think about what would feel like a dream team. Mm. When I email my team, I mean, they heard from me today. Hey, team. Hey, team, Christine. My, you don't think my team knows I'm the booking magnet? <laughs> <laughs> they have mugs. They have T-shirts, all the things. But I'm like... Ask yourself what a dream team would look like. Just like you ask yourself, what would a dream relationship feel like? I want someone who's caring. I want someone who will listen to me. I want someone who, who you know your personality. You may want someone who's a hard ass, who's going to be like, look, Brian, get it together. Yeah. That's something, stop, let's do this. If that works, if that, but be clear, what do you want? Yeah. So Brian, yeah. you know, as we wrap tonight, just a closing remark on that, on the power yeah. of, being intentional, what you desire. Y'all, I'm all about magnetism because you will attract people and experiences to your life, period, whether you believe in it or not. Yeah. And and, and what you nailed it. So I'm just going to add a tiny piece of it, which is the magnetism piece is the big piece. And the other piece of it is, I think, you're going to attract the more open you can be, the more you will attract the right person because in the just in the the channel that we, we, by which we are bringing them in is through typically through an email of some sort. Mm -hmm. So remember that email. I want to say this is a course about writing an email, right? I think that first email often starts the conversation, though. That's why I think it's so important. And so if you're going to track them in through an email, the clarity with which you show up into that cover letter, which someone up brought, brought around earlier, right? The clarity with which you say, "This is where I am. This is where I'm at. This is where I've gotten so far, and this is the gap." that are still is where I need your help, that gap is where they need to see themselves. And so by going through what Christine just talked about, how you want to vision who they are and all that stuff, then you need to make the gap that that person can fill in. You need to make that space for that person in that gap, right? And I think that, you know, the, the extra credit on this is saying, who do I need to be to be in a great relationship with the person that I'm imagining? Because there's some degree of who you will need to be to be able to have that relationship, right? I often think about focus on the person that you want and what does that relationship feel like, right? If it was really functioning, what does it feel like? And so who do you need to be? Because we all know we got days where we're not the best person to our partner, to our mom, to our dad. We have moments. We have our moments, right? So if you're going to imagine if I'm going to be in a great relationship, who do I need to be to have that be the relationship that I have? And so like you, Christine, you said they have the mugs and they have the hats and they know I'm this. Like you showed up in your fullness to them mm -hmm. instead of saying, I'm just an actor who works and here's my audition and I'm not going to tell you anything about my life and you can just watch my self-tape and you don't get to know anything about me except for I'm an actor because that's the way it's supposed to be. That's not who we fall in love with and who we have relationships with. It's when you are a human being. And so that piece of it, I would just add to it to really attract in that, what you really want. Mm. I'm purposely being quiet. Can we just sit with that? Each and every one of you has a gift that the world needs to see. Mm. And you deserve a team that sees that gift, that light in you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Period. So I mm -hmm. hope you enjoy this. I hope you receive all these tips with the love intended. If you missed any part of this, you can catch the replay, of course. Um, and this is Actors Daily Bread, again, where I teach you how to crush your auditions, book more work, and importantly, 
live a life that you love. So we have a podcast at Hollywood Bound Actors. We have a YouTube channel. We'll put this replay there. If you just like, oh, that was so juicy. I want to watch it back. You can. Um, and again, make sure you follow Brian Pataka at Brian Says That. Make sure you follow us at Hollywood Bound Actors and me, <laughs> actress Christine Horn. Come on, get your life. I'll see you all very soon. Brian, thank you for being here each and every thank one. Thank you. I'm so happy y'all came. I'll see you all next time. Peace. <laughs>